And now, a tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Listen now to Act One of The Luck of the Tiger Eye, starring Joan Loring and Leon Janney, written especially for Suspense by Jack Buttram. Henry. Hmm? I don't like it, Henry. Don't like what? The old man's quarter of a million? No, the night and that storm... And I don't like having to come all the way up here now. If we could just wait until another time... Baby, you know that the will is very explicit. You have to come up here before the month is out. Now, do you want to collect the quarter of a million or not? Oh, darling, you know I do. That's the way I like to hear my girl talk. It'll just be tough for tonight, and then we can get back to the city and... Oh, Henry. Mm. Oh. Wow. That hit just to the right. What a night. Will we be there soon? I think so. That must be it. I, I saw the old house illuminated in that last flash. The drive must be along here somewhere. Oh. What a nut. Building a house like that up here. Henry, please don't speak disrespectfully of the dead. After all, he was my uncle. And he's probably turning over in his grave at the thought of his niece coming to claim part of the inheritance. What a crazy codicil he added to the will. Oh. Okay. End of the line. Here, hand me the flashlight out of the glove compartment mm -hmm. here. Thanks. There. I've got your bag. Come on, slide out my side. It's closer. All right. Here's the door. Where's the light? There's no bell. <gasps> Oh, quite a sense of humor. Oh, it's horrid. Not everyone has a bronze cobra head for a door knocker. Well, let's see if it works. Oh, Henry, I'm, I'm scared. Oh, come on, Angel. There's nothing to be scared of. Your uncle liked you, didn't he? I guess so. He was an awfully strange man. We never did come to visit him often. Open up in there. Anybody home? Henry! Well, it's a cinch we can't stand out here all night. Let's try the door. Henry, do you think we should? Darling, I didn't drive you all the way up here to stand on the front porch in the rain and knock on the door. You are one of the legal heirs to the estate, and if you don't have a right to be here, I don't know who does. All right. Huh. It's open. Oh, it seems okay. Hmm, yeah, is it? There's no lights. No, I remember. Uncle didn't believe in electricity. Too dangerous. Well, let's say we can be fine for life. This flash won't last forever. Say, what did your uncle use for life? Whale oil lamps? I don't remember. Can't find a thing. I know he used to keep a big fire going in the fireplace over, over there somewhere. But I can't find so much as a kerosene lamp. Did the place have gas? I don't think so. Henry... Henry, don't leave me in the dark. No, I'm not leaving you, Diana. I just have to find some light, that's all. Henry. Say, maybe there are some candles in the dining room. I'll go look. Henry, don't go away. I'm just looking for candles. Henry. Huh? Something's in here. Oh, no, 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 no. There, 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 baby. It's, it's, it's. Oh, it's just a stuffed tiger. Oh. Now, darling, just calm down and keep your mind on that 250. <gasps> Sounds like someone's in the house with us. Please be careful, Henry. Now, just be quiet a moment, baby. Wait till he opens the door. Hold it right there, bud, or I'll bust you one. I beg your pardon. Okay, okay, let's have it. Now, what are you doing in here? I am the butler, sir. Huh? I'm expecting a Miss Singer. And are you, perchance, Commander Quinn? No, I'm not, perchance. It's all right, Henry. This is... Uh... Gerald, ma'am. Yes. Gerald, he's my uncle's butler. Then you are Miss Singer. Yes, Diana Singer, and this is my fiancé. He brought me up here to fulfill the wishes in my uncle's will. Yes, ma'am. And who is this Commander Quinn? He is another claimant to the master's will. I expect him this evening also. Miss Singer, I believe that the codicil to the will states that you are to spend one evening here in your uncle's home and 
by so doing, place yourself in the position of collecting $250,000. Yes. Then I shall be happy to show you to your room. Your bag, please. My room? Yes, ma'am. The bedrooms are on the second floor. One oh. is prepared for you. Well, I... This way, please. Henry. Now, don't worry, darling. I'll be right down here. I'm sorry, sir. You were not expected. If you will wait, I shall prepare a uh, room for you also. That's all right, sport. I don't expect to get much sleep in this mausoleum anyway. I'll just try the couch. As you wish, sir. I shall return in a moment. Uh, this way, ma'am, up these stairs. I'm scared, Henry. Now, darling, just keep your mind on that money. And remember, I'm right down here to protect you. <sighs> Creepy place. Creepy butler. Maybe he's in the will, too. Yeah. Maybe he gets a bigger share if some of these long-lost nieces and such don't collect. I wonder how the old man made all his money. He must have really accumulated a pile to build this dump. Sure is dark. <laughs> Hunting trophies. A tiger. Looks almost alive. Eyes glowing. Crouched, ready to spring. The eyes. They almost move. Follow you around the room. Very <laughs> natural, don't you think? Oh, where, the, where, where the devil did you come from? I beg your pardon, sir. How long have you been in here? I just returned from upstairs, sir. Uh, Miss Singer is in her room. The master acquired that uh, trophy in India. It's one of the largest on record. Is uh, something the matter, sir? No, nothing's the matter. I, I was just noticing that. Tiger's eyes. Yes, yes, they are very real, aren't they? Uh, would you like for me to fix you a drink? Yes, a, a double scotch on the rocks. Uh, yes, sir, but I'm afraid we have no ice. Well, then, just a double scotch. Yes, sir. Hmm. What well, says? It looks like. Old diary. Let's see. Hmm. Last entry. The secret of my success in the financial world is one that shall go with me to the grave. I have ordered that the ring shall be placed on my little finger, left hand, just before the coffin is sealed. Thus shall the luck of the tiger eye remain with me in the grave. The luck of the tiger eye. Your drink, sir. Yeah, thanks. Uh, your, uh, your master, quite a funny fellow, was he? Sir? Well, I mean, you know, eccentric. I wouldn't know about that, sir. Oh, of course. I, I suppose he was always kind to you, wasn't he? The master was always most considerate. Will that be all, sir? Hmm? Yes. Yes, I guess that's all. Oh, 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 Gerald. Uh, yes, sir. Did you know, uh, the master quite well? Quite well, sir. I was his only servant for 25 years. Oh, I see. Then you would know about the luck of the, uh, tiger eye. The tiger eye? Yes. Yes, I, I think it was a ring he used to wear. Oh, no, sir. He never wore it. Are you sure? Quite sure, sir. He kept it with him always, but he never wore it. He never wore it? Never, sir. Then why did he call the tiger eye the secret of his power? I'm sure I don't know, sir. Is that all, sir? Yes. Oh, one, one thing more. Do you know where the tiger eye is right now? Yes, sir. Where? Right now, it is on the little finger of his left hand. In just a moment, we shall return for Act Two of Suspense. To get information on telephone numbers, you dial the information operator. 
To get Information Central, covering just about anything except phone numbers, you set your dial right here on the CBS radio network every day, Monday through Friday. By so dialing, you will get reports in dimension on all sorts of fascinating items. From the feature's knowledgeable head man, Alan Jackson, on Information Central. Diana. Diana. Wake up. Come to the door. Diana. Henry? Come to the door. Hurry. Henry, do you know what time it is? You nearly scared me out of my... Do you know where your uncle is buried? What? Where is your uncle buried? What? I think he's buried in the crypt on the hill behind the house. I think he had one built there. Why do you want to know? Just get dressed and meet me downstairs. I will not. Not until you tell me I'll what I'll tell you as we go along. Now hurry. I wish you wouldn't, Henry. I don't think it's right. Now, how can it do any harm just to look at this famous ring of your uncle's? But robbing graves... We're not robbing graves. We're just looking into the coffin just to see a famous ring and pay our last respects. I've paid my last respects. And I don't see what an old ring has We're to do with it. We're almost there. There. I saw it. It's over this way. Oh. Come on. Well, let's go inside. I really don't think we should. Oh, quit it. There's nothing to be afraid of. Come on in. Is that it over there? I think so. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, that's him. Oh, Henry. Henry, let's get out of here before something terrible happens. Now, what could happen? I don't know. I just have a feeling that if we go any farther, it's going to be awful. <laughs> just your imagination. Now, hold the light steady and... We'll give Uncle the once over. Henry, don't speak disrespectfully. Disrespectfully of the dead. I won't if you just give me a hand with getting the lid off this thing. Uh, Easy. Uh, down. That's it. There. Well, that's done. I'm afraid. Diana, it's just your uncle. Now let me open the coffin and look for the ring. The diary said on the little finger left hand. Here. Now let's see. I have to lean over here to see the hand on this sign. Hey, shine the light in here, Diana. I won't. I'm not going to get near that coffin while it's open. Oh, for Pete's sakes, here. Hand me the light. Uh, yes, yes, here it is. This must be the tiger eye. Oh, it's a beauty. Look, Diana. I won't. Oh. Well, okay, okay. I'll, I'll just have to get it off his finger. Henry, you're not going to take it. Of course. It's not doing the old man any good. And after all, it's not as if it's going to be out of the family. You'll have it. I won't have anything to do with it. Okay, you'll feel different later. Hmm. Something seems to be stuck. Holding the ring on. Henry, if you don't get me out of here this very instant, I... All right, Diana, just a second. Now, one more pull. Ah! Oh, that lid almost fell on you. You're telling me. It was as if something pushed that lid to make it fall on you. Diana, don't talk nonsense. I saw it move, Henry. I know. I saw it move, too, as I jumped back. No, I saw it move when it was balanced up there. Diana, it just fell when I gave that last pull to get the ring. That ring is evil. Diana. What? Look how it shines in the light. It does look like a tiger's eye. Henry. Please, let's go back to the house. Oh, Diana. The firelight makes it glow like something alive. You shouldn't have taken it. The first thing in the morning, you will have to put it back. Okay, okay, baby. Anything you say. But what good is the ring doing anybody out there in the coffin with it, him? It's not what good it's doing. It's what evil it's doing while it's out. Diana, the ring has just a semi-precious stone. Just the same. It's going back. Oh. Henry. Yeah. Oh, Henry, I don't want to talk about that old ring anymore. 
You'd think you're expecting your uncle to come for it. <laughs> Will you take it easy, Diana? You don't have to get upset over every little sound. I'll go, sir. <gasps> oh, Gerald, the next time you do that, I swear... I'm sorry, I'll... sir, I'm sorry. Commander Quinn. That's right. You're expected, sir. Come right in. Thank you, thank you. Oh, uh, hello. Hello, I'm, uh, Henry Letcher. How do you do? Colby Quinn, uh, glad to meet you. This is my fiance, Diana Singer. Oh, pleased to meet you, Miss Singer. Won't you join us? We've... We've had something of a wet night. Yes, yes, it has been a rather bad one, hasn't it? Well, my plane was delayed. When I finally got it, I decided I might as well dash on up here and get it over with as soon as possible. Uh, oh, uh, um... Gerald. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, Gerald. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, could I have a bit of brandy, please? Right away, sir. Thank you. So, you're in the inheritance, too? Uh, yes, yes. And, and you, uh, are you one of my long-lost kin? No. But I suppose you and Diana are cousins somewhere along the line. Yes, I suppose so. What's the uniform? Oh, uh, RAF. I got in during the war and never got around to getting out. At least, no, not, not for long. And if you spend the night here, you get a quarter of a million also? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, that's the way it seems to shape up. The old man must have been loaded with dough. Well, I, I don't know very much about him at all. It seems he was somewhat uh, eccentric. Somewhat? Henry, don't speak to Okay, okay. And uh, quite a, a sportsman, I believe. Oh, yes, yes, so I've heard. You know, I've, uh, I've also heard he was practically unbeatable at whatever he tried. <laughs> Is that so? Mm hmm. Uh, do you know about the luck of the uh, tiger eye? Tiger eye? Mm hmm. Seems to me I have heard something of it in, in India. Yes, bad as I remember. But I can't quite put my finger on it. Well, we uh, have reason to believe that the old man used a tiger eye ring as the secret of his power. I, uh, I, I don't quite understand. Over here in his diary. He said... Now, look here, old man. You haven't been going through his private papers, have you? Do you see, Henry? I told you. Of course not. I merely looked inside his diary at the last entry. His diary? You, you had no right Don't to... tell me what I have a right to do. I want power. I need power, and that's what the old man said he got with the ring. You, you have the ring? Yes, yes, I have the ring. And in the diary, it says that this ring was the secret of his wealth and power. Well, possibly so, old man, but in any case, the ring is part of the estate and as such belongs to the heirs. No. The ring went to the grave with him. He didn't intend for any of you to have it. Good heavens, man. Do you mean to tell me that you've robbed my uncle's grave? I've got the ring and I intend to keep it. But, but what possible good can the ring do you? The stone is only semi-precious, as I remember. Yes, it's quite right, sir. Oh. Mr. Letcher, the stone has no intrinsic value. You, Gerald, how did he use this ring? Use the ring, sir. Use the ring. You heard me. You were his only servant for 25 years. You must have known about the ring. Yes, sir. I knew about the ring. But it was my master's wish that the ring be buried with him. Well, I have the ring now. And I intend to use it. Now I want you to tell me how it must be used. Miss Singer... Can't you reason with him? Oh, Henry, oh, please. Oh, shut up, Diana. Oh. Sir, you are making a scene. Look here, I, I can't stand by and stand see Stand by and do what? <laughs> Gerald. Don't... I want to know how your master used this ring. Henry. You're hurting me. I'll do a lot more if you don't tell me quick. <laughs> Very well, sir. It's more like it. He kept the ring in his possession, as I said, sir. But he never wore it. Yes, yes. Especially would he use the ring when, when dealing with business associates and the like. Go on. But when the occasion suited, he, he would give them the ring. Give them the ring? Yes, sir. But how did he get it back? Oh, it always came back, sir. Now I get it. They would put it with their other valuables, and he would arrange then to swipe the whole caboodle. Hardly, sir. Come on, now. You don't need to defend the old man before me. 
In fact, I think I know him better than the rest of you anyway. There is one other thing, sir. Yes? Whenever he would give someone the ring, he would tell them to place it on the little finger left hand and to twist it around three times for good luck. Little finger left hand, twist it around three times. That's what he would say, sir. Well, old Henry Letcher is ready to let himself in for a piece of that luck right now. Oh, it's... There. It's on the little finger. Henry, I don't think you'd better... There's something simply awful that's going to happen. I feel it. Don't be ridiculous, Diana. Now, to twist the ring around my fingers three times. Henry, don't. I really wouldn't do that if I were you, sir. (laughs) You wouldn't do this if you were me. But you aren't me. I'm Henry Letcher, and I want to have lots of good luck, lots of power, lots of money. So, here's to the tiger eye luck. One, two, three. There. I can almost feel it flowing in my veins. Why, it's like I'm ten feet tall. I feel as if I'm going right through the ceiling. I'm (coughs) flying. (coughs) Henry! 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 Please, someone help him. The tiger eye. The robber ring. I should have remembered. Precisely, sir. It was a trick the Indian merchants used. What are you talking about? When, when pressed for their valuables, they would offer the robber this ring to put on. Yes, sir. But what was it that killed him? Hidden inside is a tiny spring, quite pointed. It is coiled and embedded in wax that melts at body temperature. Oh. The point is dipped in cobra poison or something equally quite... Legal. And as he twisted the ring around his finger, the spring scratched him, inflicting a deadly wound. Oh. Precisely, sir. Master used to call it the luck of the tiger eye. He had quite a sense of humor. Suspense. You've been listening to The Luck of the Tiger Eye, starring Joan Loring and Leon Jenny and written especially for Suspense by Jack Buttram. Suspense is produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Heard in tonight's story were Raymond Edward Johnson as Gerald and Mercer McLeod as Commander Quinn. Listen again next week when we return with And So to Sleep, My Love, written by Dave W. Gilbert. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Derwood Kirby's favorite program, The Gary Moore Show, weekdays on the CBS radio network.